today we're going to set up a Nextcloud instance on a Ubuntu virtual machine on my TrueNAS scale server. Then we're going to set up a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate to access the Nextcloud instance. Thanks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our TrueNAS web GUI. We're going to create a virtual drive first. Then we're going to go create the virtual machine. And you can technically make the drive from within that sheen wizard, but I don't like to use the machine wizard for that, so that's your call. So let's just go ahead and fill out all these options. We're going to go ahead and name it here. You see I set it to uh, 700 gigs, and I don't want to force the size. Again, that's, that's your call. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. You see, there it is. And the reason I did 700 is because you don't want to have, um, if I remember right, it's 85% more than what the actual storage capacity is to be used. So here we're going to set up a CPU and stuff. Again, this is personal preference. I'm just going to do uh, 248. That's generally what I do when I make these, and I think they generally don't have any issues. Alright, and then I'm going to make this... Um, 8 gigs and uh, 4 gigs. Alright, then we're going to use our existing one. So, there it is where I created it. Now we're going to hit next. And then we're going to click that because we want to give it an IP address and we're going to assign the NIC that it's going to use. Now I've already downloaded the live Ubuntu server and I uploaded it here, but you might have to hit that upload option there. Now we're going to go ahead and hit save. Alright, so let's go ahead and start it up. I'm going to go ahead and hit display. What I have to do is first boot and we'll do the install. And you'll see that I sped up a few of these parts. Some of them are one minute, some are five, some are ten. So let's go to the setup. We're going to go ahead and update to the new installer. Let it do its thing. Alright, we're going to select the keyboard we want to use. And for this, I'm going to do the uh, Ubuntu server minim minimized. We're going to wait for DHCP to give it its first temporary IP address. Alright, and then now we're going to do the uh, testing for the mirror location. This is the app that should get the update. Alright, now I'm going to get rid of the LVM group. Just not necessary in this case. Alright, then we're going to hit done here and we're going to let it do its thing. And it's going to format the disk, so it's giving me the warning here. Alright, then I'm going to go ahead and name this Morgan's Mods. Server, Ubu Cloud for Ubuntu. Make my username the same, Morgan's Mods. Then you're going to select your password. I'm going to do a simple one just for this demonstration. We're going to skip this. I am going to install OpenSSH because I'm going to use it here in a minute because it's easier than using it through the browser. We're not going to install anything, and now we're going to let it do its thing. It's now installing the actual OS. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. It took it about six or seven minutes. Instead of hitting reboot, I'm just gonna go ahead and power it off because what I'm gonna do is first thing I gotta remove the installation media, which in this case is the CD ROM. We're just gonna delete. Alright, now in my case I'm gonna go to PFSense, but you're just gonna go to your router. To give it a static IP address, so I'm going to sign it to PFSense. I'm going to go to status, then DHCP leases. I'm going to scroll down and find it, then I hit the add button. I'm going to give it the IP address in my case of 192.168.10.202. Then I'm going to give it a description, I'll make it easy to, you know, for administrative purposes to know what it is. Hit save, hit apply. Sign. Alright, and then 
now I'm gonna sign in and reboot. I'm gonna sped this up as well. Now I'm gonna log back in. And then when I'm doing a lot of stuff, I go ahead and do sudo su. That way I don't have to keep putting sudo in for everything. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Putty here. I'm gonna create a new profile for Ubu Cloud. save. Now what I'm going to do here, just save me a little bit of time, I'm going to type in my username. Then I'm going to go back. I'm going to save it again. Now I'm going to open it. I'm going to hit accept here because I trust the certificate. Then now all I'm going to do is type in a password. Now that we've got that, we're going to actually close this web browser window. We're going to open up my GitHub page on one side, and then the putty window on the other. And then I made this very easy. You'll see the link in the description. You're going to be able to copy and paste everything over. We're going to do the time here. I'm setting my time zone. As you see, right now it's a few hours off from Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to set it to America, New York. for the actual setup finally. Alright, same thing. We're going to copy paste. Because I've already figured this out ahead of time. Save everybody the time. It's going to take a few minutes to do this first part. We're installing a lot of prerequisites. Alright, and now we're going to nano the file. But I forgot since I used the minimal version, nano wasn't already included. Install nano real quick. Alright, now that nano's installed, I'm going to open it up again. Now we're going to hit Control w to search. We're going to change these very specific things. The first thing is the date.time zone. Alright, and you see right there, it says nothing. We're going to put UTC. You can change the latitude, longitude and stuff if you'd like, but for this demonstration, I didn't really find it necessary. Alright, so we're going to control W again. We're going to look for memory limit. Alright, there we go. Let's see, the default is 128 megabytes, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to 512, and this is per process, so it doesn't have to be so crazy high. It doesn't even really need to be this high, to be honest, but just to prevent any performance issues in the future. So we're going to control W again, and now we're going to look for the upload max file size. This one I feel like is very important. I've got tons of you know, home videos with iPhones and stuff that have uh, definitely surpassed 500 megabytes. So for this example, I'm actually going to do it a lot higher. We'll go ahead and um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and make it 100 gigs just for the hell of it. And you can look up the documentation to see why this is important. But these little options right here that we're doing will make your server perform better. And I guess just for the hell of it, we'll do 100 gigs. But again, you do not need this much. Anywhere near it, actually. But let's control W again. And now we're going to look for max execution time. Again, this is another very important um, setting, server performance. Thirty-six hundred. This is definitely more than enough. This is seconds, by the way. We're gonna go ahead and hit Control X, and then yes, save. My SQL. Now copy this, but obviously change the password line to the password that you want to use. Alright, and we see query is okay, so we're good to go. Alright, now we're going to grant uh, privileges to that database that we just created for the user we just created. And now we're going to flush them and quit. Now we're going to go ahead and get the latest release, which in my case 
watching this video for today on the March 13th. Nextcloud 26.0.1. So we're going to go ahead and download that zip file. And now we're going to unzip it. I might have to install it. Yep. Again, we're using the minimalist version, so nothing's installed. So I gotta install unzip real quick, just like we had to do with nano. And after this finishes, we're gonna go ahead and do it again. So let's unzip it. This might take just a second. Now we're gonna relocate it. Assign some permissions to it on the Ubuntu side. Now we're going to nano into the file. And after I did this, I wasn't doing it. Um, I wasn't narrating it as I originally did it, but I did mess this up here, and I had to come back to it later. So where it says example.com, make sure that that's where you put your dynamic DNS host name. And in my case, I use no IP. That and I hit save and then I'm gonna realize here in a moment probably about a minute or two that I forgot to uh, move example.com we're gonna follow these steps all right now we're gonna restart the Apache service all right check on the status of it all right and now we're gonna actually do the let's encrypt part and this here in a minute is when I realized that I forgot to put the website in and I also needed to open up my firewall to allow it. Which I just did some port forwarding to um, push it to the 443 port of the Nextcloud instance. And then in my DNS resolver, I had to do the same thing, that way I could use it locally. Here's where you type in again that website for your dynamic DNS provider. In my case it was no IP. And this is when I realized that I forgot to uh, change that example.com. So we're going to go back and I'm going to do it here. And then I'm pretty much just going to repeat the steps all over again. The let's encrypt part. And you see I'm just hitting the up button on my keyboard to go back to all these steps that I have to do again. Same stuff again. And it looks like everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and open up our Nextcloud instance on that dynamic DNS port. And here we go. Now you're going to create your Nextcloud admin account. And I used to have a Nextcloud set up, so that's why my password's already saved. And for this database user, this is going to be the username and password that we created doing the steps above. So in my case, it's going to be Nextcloud and the database is going to be whatever you assign that password. And the database name again is going to be Nextcloud. We're going to hit install, and it might actually cut out for a second. All right, now we're going to sign in with that admin account that we had just created. There we go, signed in. Now you can start going and configuring and everything and whatnot. So uh, and you'll see up there, we're at the arrow pointing that there is an SSL certificate and the site is secure. I hope this was helpful to somebody. Even if it's only one person, then I feel like that's a success to me. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.